Today I'm reviewing the LA220 condenser microphone from Lawton Audio and spoiler alert, it is a lovely microphone. However, What's good for vocalists and recording studios might not be good for creators like you. So I'm going to be taking a closer look uh, or listen to the LA220 with creators in mind. Hey, it's Matt Haynes. You know, one of the exciting things about microphones is that there's almost an infinite variety of possibilities. And yet they're relatively simple pieces of technology. That means boutique family owned businesses like Lawton Audio can make these amazing microphones with real personality and they can also go up against the big guys and meet or exceed the quality standards. The LA220 is part of Lawton's Black Series and I gotta say Lawton really has its packaging game down. Now most microphones in this price range would probably come in a simple box with a with a photo of the microphone on the cover. No, the LA220 comes in this black on black box, magnetic enclosure and I gotta say I had this this little thrill of anticipation opening the box. Now I know packaging really has nothing to do with the microphone quality, but it really set the stage for a positive experience. The microphone itself is really nice looking too. It feels sturdy. It's got this tapered cylinder body, uh, the head basket, that's the screen thing on top. This feels really sturdy too. I, I don't think you're gonna dent it in day-to-day -day use. This microphone has two switches on it, and when you get a microphone with two switches, typically you have a low roll-off filter and you have a pad. Uh, Lawton decided to go a different direction. They have a low roll-off filter and it rolls off at 120 hertz, but they also have a high roll-off filter, and that rolls off at 12 kilohertz. Lawton's product webpage says that you can duplicate the sound of vintage microphones using these switches. I mean, there's a little bit more to a vintage microphone sound than just rolling off the high end, but it is nice to have a high roll off if you need it. The downside of course with that design choice is that you can't knock down the sensitivity if you've got a really loud sound source. So let me demonstrate now how these filters sound. Right now you're hearing it flat, there's no switches engaged, and now I'm going to engage the low roll off filter that rolls off at 120 hertz. Now you're listening to the LA220 with the 120 hertz low roll off filter or high pass filter if you prefer to call it that. That is engaged now so we're rolling off the low end frequencies at 120 hertz. So now we're back to flat just for reference and I'm going to engage the high roll off filter and again we're rolling off at 12 kilohertz here. And this is how the microphone sounds with rolling off the high end at 12 kilohertz. The 12 kilohertz filter is engaged and I'm just being repetitive so that you can hear how things sound. And we're back to flat again. And uh, one more thing, I'm just gonna engage both switches at the same time. So we're rolling off the low end and the high end. All right, now we are rolling the low end off and the high end off. We are slightly more mid-rangey than uh, the microphone would otherwise be. But of course, these roll-offs are at the extreme ends of the frequency range. So this is what it sounds like when both filters are engaged. So this microphone comes with two filter switches, but it doesn't have a pad switch. Is that going to be a big deal? Probably not. Uh, the maximum SPL that this can handle is 130 dB. And if you compare that to the Neumann U87 AI, that can only handle 117 dB. So uh, people seem to muddle along with the U87 quite well. I don't think you're gonna have a problem with this. The LA220 is really quiet too. Its self noise is rated at 15 dB. And just for reference, again, the Neumann U87, a microphone that is literally 10 times the price of this microphone has a self noise of 12 dB. So those are essentially equal values. This is a large diaphragm microphone. The diaphragm is 25 millimeters in diameter or one inch and the capsule itself is a 32 millimeter diameter capsule. You may have noticed I'm not using a pop filter on this microphone and I was comparing this microphone to another large diaphragm condenser microphone the other day and I noticed that the other microphone was just getting crushed with plosives, whereas this microphone handles them quite well. So I reached out to Lawton and I said, hey, is there any sort of, uh, you know, windscreen or pop filter built into it? Because it's doing a really good job of plosives without using a pop filter. And they responded saying, nope, there's no pop filter in there, no windscreen. It's just partly their uh, capsule design, partly the head basket design. And oh, by the way, I should always use a pop filter with condenser microphones. So I followed up and I said, hey, was the plosive handling, was that part of the design considerations or is that just a happy accident? And they responded saying, nope, just a happy accident. And I should always use a pop filter with condenser microphones. Okay, Lawton, I get the idea. I should always use 
use a pop filter with condenser microphones. And and that's true. It's not just for pops and plosives. It's also to keep the spit and the gunk from getting inside your microphone over the years, which will really degrade the sound quality. So use a pop filter. Unfortunately, the LA220 does not come with a pop filter. In fact, I don't think Lawton Audio sells pop filters at all, at least as far as I can tell from their website. So I'm gonna have to use the third party pop filter to make them happy. But just be aware that pop filters do sometimes change the sound of the microphone, uh, usually by rolling off the high end a little bit. So you wanna test your pop filter and make sure it's not gonna affect the sound too much. Okay, so I'm gonna put a pop filter on in just a second. now. Notice I haven't had the microphone directly in front of my mouth. I've had it off center. That's for two reasons. One, it looks better on camera. But two, when I do have plosives, they tend to fire out rather than directly into the microphone. So let's do some plosive test. This is off center. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Okay, now we're directly onto the microphone here. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Okay, I have a pop filter on now and one more plosive test. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. So I'm gonna keep it off center here though, just for uh, looking good on camera. The LA220 does come with a shock mount and you're looking at it right here. And this is one of the nicer shock mounts I've seen actually. It's uh, it's mostly metal. I think the only plastic on it is probably the, uh, the, the knob for adjusting it. And um, it's also a cutaway design. So the front here is, is clear so that you can actually get the front of the microphone up to your sound source. So if you need to get it close to like a guitar cabinet or, or something like that, you don't have the shock mount uh, getting in the way. That's pretty cool. So not only is this shock mount convenient, but it does a really good job protecting against shocks. Check this out. So I'm gonna tap on the microphone first, just so you can see how that sounds. Right, you can hear that. Now, let me tap on the, the shock mount on the outer ring. Let me tap on the boom arm here. It is really doing a great job of preventing any bonks or clonks or anything from making it into the microphone. By the way, this microphone is on loan to me from Lawton. They didn't give it to me. They didn't pay me. I got to return it when I'm done reviewing it. So while I was waiting for it to show up in the mail, I took a look at their frequency response chart and there's a bump in the low end. So I, when I got it, I was kind of expecting it to maybe be a little bit boomier than other microphones. But to be honest, I'm not hearing it that way. It sounds really kind of smooth and flat in a good way. And if you look at the chart, there's a little bit of a dip in the maybe 3K region, which could help control sibilance a little bit, I guess. But overall, the variations in frequency response are maybe 2 dB plus or minus overall, it's a very flat microphone. Now, all cardioid microphones have a proximity effect. It's just built into the physics. It's the way cardioid microphones work. But, you know, different microphones have a different character with proximity. So I just want to give you a sense of what that is in this microphone. Okay, I am two fists away from this microphone right now. And... Um, this is, uh, you know, probably a typical distance for a vocalist to record. And now I am one fist away from the microphone. You can start to hear the proximity effect a little bit more. And now I'm really up on the microphone. I am about an inch away from the actual capsule. And uh, this is the proximity effect when you are eating the mic, as they say. The LA220 goes for about $350 retail. And of course, there are a lot cheaper microphones on the market, including the one I'm using right now. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020. And if you're just starting out with your home recording studio, your creator studio, you may have a mic similar to this one. In fact, you may have this mic itself because this is a really popular kind of starter microphone and it only goes for a hundred dollars the sound is it's okay it's not great but it is a it is a very common starter microphone but it is also really susceptible to plosives now i have the same pop filter on as i did for the la220 but i want you to hear how this sounds with a pop filter and without a pop filter peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers okay not bad with a pop filter on by the way which it does not come with Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Ugh. And let's compare that with the LA220. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. The LA220 is undeniably a great microphone, and it really has me rethinking what's possible in the under $500 range. However, the question remains, is this microphone suitable for creators such as podcasters, streamers, and YouTubers? Now, unlike vocalists, content creators often position the microphone really close to their mouth. And there's actually two reasons for this. One is, Sometimes they like that proximity effect, that radio announcer effect, you know, it has that rich low end. But the other reason is, 
Creators are often working in rooms that are untreated, so they're trying to eliminate background noise, they're trying to eliminate room sound, reflections, and to do that, if the closer you get to the mic, the less of that you're going to have. Now, condenser microphones, as compared to dynamic microphones, tend to be really sensitive to plosives. I mean, that's a generalized statement, obviously, but it, they tend to be more sensitive. So if you get really close to a condenser microphone, you're going to get those plosives, even with a pop filter sometimes. However, the LA220 does a really nice job with plosives, even with no pop filter. So with the addition of a really sort of discreet pop filter here that isn't like a giant circle in front of your face. I think this microphone can be really useful on camera. And if you're doing podcasts where you're not on camera or you're doing voiceovers, even better. And this microphone just sounds really smooth and flat and, and doesn't have like a hyped boosted high end like a lot of low end consumer microphones have. So in my mind, the LA220 is a definite yes if you're looking to upgrade your studio. Like most condenser microphones, the LA220 requires phantom power. Uh, it requires a mic preamp. And if your current situation is such that you're like maybe using a USB microphone that plugs directly into your computer or your microphone plugs into your camera, then you're probably gonna need some additional equipment. I recently did a review of a USB microphone preamp that allows you to plug in gorgeous microphones like this into your computer and it sounds good and it doesn't cost a lot. So check that out right here.